In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. May I invite you to be seated for our notices. A reminder of our children's club, which is taking place this morning, where the children will leave us for their own activities during the Gloria. And it's been brought to my attention to bring a notice regarding our lighting here at All Saints. On the 5th of February, when our service is next at All Saints, there'll be a chance to find out about the progress of the lighting project from Mr. Robin McConnell. He is going to give a resume of where we are regarding the funding and the faculties, etc. Since the launch in April, over 50% of the total has been raised. And if we can get to 75%, we might be able to commission the work. Given the failure of half the nave lights over the Christmas, this cannot come soon enough so that once again we can indeed say a people who walked in darkness have now seen a wonderful light. <laughs> Today we celebrate the baptism of the Christ. It's almost like a third epiphany. We often think of epiphany maybe as being when the, the wise men arrive. But in fact, this epiphany of revealing, a seeing, is Christmas Day, epiphany, and the baptism. Three feasts, all of revealing the Christ in our midst. And so let us stand to celebrate this feast as we sing, Breathe on me, breath of God. <clears throat> The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
God of all healing and forgiveness, draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognize him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, reading verses 1 to 9. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is taken from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness, forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptised by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptised by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfil all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptised, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Familiar words we hear each time we have a service of baptism here um, in this church or in any other of the parish churches um, here in this town or up and down the country. Many of us were baptised as babies or small children and probably have little or no recollection of the powerful moment of baptism. But for those who were baptised later, later on in life, those words can be laden with much more significance and effect. Baptism is something which, as followers of Jesus, we are instructed to do. Just about the last words Jesus speaks in Matthew's Gospel are the words, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. These are the words we sometimes refer to as the Great Commission. Jesus sends his disciples into the world to baptise all people. And so, since the days of the earliest Christian communities, right up to the present day, the practice of baptism as an act of commitment and faithfulness to God has continued down through all those centuries. Baptism is both God's free gift to us and our human response to that gift. Today, we remember Jesus' own baptism. He begins his ministry by being baptised by his cousin John. Matthew says he came from Galilee to find John so as to be baptised. He is obediently putting into action the next stage of his heavenly father's plan. This must happen because that is what God has planned should happen. And so, despite John's initial reservation, Jesus is baptised. Not in a font, in a tiny pool of water, of course, but fully immersed in the River Jordan. And as he comes up from the water, a voice from heaven pronounces that this is my son, Jesus is declared to be the Son of God. And these things, which took place 2,000 years ago in a strange country by the River Jordan, are relevant to us today because in the act of baptism, Christians are declared to be God's children. Just as in his baptism, Jesus was declared to be Son of God, Baptism is a gift of God and is administered in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. And in this gospel recounting of the baptism of Jesus, we clearly see all three manifestations of God acting together. God the Son is baptized, God the Holy Spirit descends upon him, and God the Father speaks. The baptism service we use in the Church of England today is full of symbolism and imagery. It's all about the beginning of a journey with God. The first response to God's love. It should be a joyful occasion, of course, for everyone as we rejoice in what God has done for us, as well as making serious promises and declaring the faith of the church. I like to talk at baptism services about the gift of faith, which is inside all of us, and how baptism is the first step in opening that gift. But back now to the gospel reading for today. Less than three weeks ago, we were celebrating the birth of Jesus, and our homes were full of decorations and cards and presents. And then on Friday, just a couple of days ago, it was the Feast of the Epiphany. And some of us celebrated the arrival of the three wise men who gave the infant Jesus perhaps the most famous presents in history, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And now, just two days later, we celebrate his baptism. But it's not the infant Jesus being baptized, of course. It's Jesus the adult. We've had to make a jump of 30 or so years from Friday. We have to remind ourselves that Jesus was baptized as an adult and not as a baby. And in a few weeks' time at Candlemas, we will be back with Jesus as a baby as we hear the story of his presentation at the temple by Mary and Joseph and Simeon's prophetic words about the child's future. One of the reasons the church year makes these jumps in time is because one of the themes of this season of Epiphany is revelation, which is, of course, the meaning of the word epiphany, a sudden revelation or manifestation, a showing. This is the time of year when we focus on how, in Jesus Christ, God's word was made flesh. We think about what the incarnation, the birth of Jesus means, and how the reality of God becoming one of us and living among us was first discerned and responded to. We think about what this revelation means in our lives. Because as Christians... Because as our Christmas decorations are put back in the loft, we begin a new year. We hear in the church year the story of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And as we listen to the story of the baptism of Jesus, we are reminded, perhaps, of our own baptism and pointed to the baptism of all those who will come through these doors this year seeking baptism for themselves or their children. We are reminded of the Spirit of God moving over the waters of baptism as the voice calls from heaven with affirmation and blessing. And so we ask that the Holy Spirit may so move in each of our lives that we too may hear God's calling to each one of us affirming us and blessing us as we begin this new year. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge, to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the Church, for the world, and all people according to their needs. Dear Lord, as we remember the birth and early life of your Son, Jesus, we give thanks for his life of love as the foundation of your Church. We give thanks for the lives of Church leaders throughout the ages, and pray that today's bishops and priests show the leadership needed in these times of troubles in our world. Guide them in their work. We pray for our bishops, Stephen and Olivia, and our team clergy, Sally, Richard and John. Grant that we and all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and show forth your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the gifts of your creation. We pray that human society learns quickly to counter the effects of climate change. Guide us as individuals to make useful changes in our lives. As we enter this new year with economic and social stress in the country and more widely, we give thanks for those who take on leadership roles. Guide them, we pray, and grant them wisdom and sound judgment in exercising their authority. Give wisdom to all in authority. Bless Charles, our King, and direct this nation and all nations in the ways of justice and of peace, that men and women may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the lives of all those in the local community who volunteer to help others. We pray for guidance that we, may, we each may use our talents to the benefit of others. Bless the work of Windsor Christian Action, the Homeless Project, the Street Angels, and Windsor Food Share. We pray and give thanks for all those who work in social services. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours in Christ, that we may serve one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for the sick, in particular the terminally ill. Comfort them in their time of suffering and bring them peace. We give thanks for hospices and other care establishments and organisations. Bless their work and of all those who work in them. We pray for the sick, 
for Anne Harding, Evelyn Hill, Betty Doughty, Steve, Anne Hudgel, Margaret Parsons, and any others known to us personally. Save and comfort those who suffer, that they may hold to you through good and ill, and trust in your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, comfort the bereaved, that through your love they may find strength. We remember the departed, Gerald Milne, and any others known to us personally. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your, to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Open the heavens, Lord our God, and send your transforming spirit on us and on these gifts. May we who are baptized into Christ be ready to share his cup of suffering and strengthened to serve him forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord. You renew that mystery in bread and wine to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. And this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint John the Baptist, Saint Stephen, Saint Agnes and all the saints 
may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us the light and life. Jesus, the Lord. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. 
Lord of all time and eternity. You opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit remain upon you and those whom you love in this world and in the life to come. Amen.
come to Christ the living water, go in peace and love. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.